um, today. I'm just going to start by telling the story of, of just a wildfire in our neighborhood here, because uh, I had the great luck to, to be uh, quite involved in it on a couple of different fronts. So, so I, I'm not going to wear my, my climate change hat or my planning hat. Mostly, I'm going to wear my, you know, tell a story about a, about a fire that could have been in anyone's watershed. Uh, here, it just happened to be in, in, in the Hare Proctor uh, Community Forest watershed. So, like I said, I'm going to tell the story of the wildfires, the wildfire in 2017. Um, so I am going to sneak in a little bit of, of Hare Proctor's current climate change adaptation project because it's directly relevant, uh, and I'm going to talk a bit about lessons learned. And there is there is a picture of me there that I happened to find in an old presentation when I was just a young pup lighting fires uh, for one day. Um, okay, so just for those of you who, who don't know where Hare Proctor Community Forest is, there it is. Uh, let me just see if I can get this. Uh, they need to work. Oops. There we go. Nelson, Harrop, Proctor. Uh, the uh, community forest outline is, is in pink there. Um, that's just a Google Earth image. It comprises of uh, four main watersheds Harrop, Slater, Narrows, Proctor, and also Irvine Creek. All consumptive use watersheds. People drink right out of the creeks. Um, and it's access, the community is accessed by a, a ferry right there. Um, which ferry seems like a long way across the lake when the fire is bearing down on you, but it doesn't look very far in that picture. Uh, this is just to show we have done a lot of planning work in the community forest. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of our mapping layers, but um, my point was here is, you know, you do a lot of planning for a lot of years, and all of a sudden you're thrust into a fire, and all that planning is, is on the verge of being moot. There's our board a few years ago. Uh, it's, it's, we're a community co-op. Uh, the members are all residents and water users and that's who I report to as the folks in the community. So what, we're one of 50 community forests in the province. We're a co-op uh, watershed based. That's the background of our community forest. Okay, so here's the story here, and I'm just going to run through a whole bunch of pictures here, sort of walk through it, give you a little bit of a story time here, um, as I saw it. Um, July 27th last year, uh, it hadn't rained in close to six weeks. Uh, there was a little lightning, a uh, band of lightning came through, like happens many times, lightning strike on a ridge in the back. Uh, looked like that after one or two days. They had tried, they, they did put a water bomber uh, on it and didn't work. Um, that's what it looked like shortly thereafter. Here's my little prompt here. Okay, so this is the typical Kootenai backcountry, right? So I asked myself, where's the fire breaks? Where's the access? Can you even fight this fire? Um, and that was the question right off the bat. This is the top end of the Harrow Creek. Uh, watershed. You will see right here, we just so happened that's the end of our logging road with a cut block and that ended up being a staging area for the fire. If we didn't have a staging area for the fire within a kilometer or two of where it started, I don't know if we would have had much chance at all. Okay, so there were guys on the ground. So my role, I'll, I'll get to it in a second, I'm not a firefighter. Uh, I, was, I was on the front lines for a bunch of the time. I'll, I'll explain that role in a second, but these are the guys, uh, that's Billy and uh, oh, Jed, uh, two of the first guys on a fire from our local fire zone, starting to plan what we're going to do, because the initial attack uh, was not successful um, on that fire. The challenge was, is it was too steep to put people directly on that fire, to get them on there safely, as I understand it. You know, you, you can't put people above it. There's, how do you get them there? It's dense forest everywhere. There's no helipads right there. So they started to set up pumps and whatnot. This is what the fire looked like a couple days later. It was starting to get going. There was a bunch of dead pine. Uh, this was taken, I believe, from across the lake uh, by a fellow in, in uh, probably Redfish Creek area. Okay. Around that time, well, actually, day around this time, actually this time, I was taken up on, on a heli flight uh, to look at the fire as the, as the forest manager in the area and, and talk about what we could do, if anything. And put together, put my different pieces of 
part of our landscape level climate change adaptation project is to look at fuel breaks at the landscape level for the whole community forest. So here's the fire. Here's the fire guards we built, and that's the one that we extended up into here. Uh, we're working on a large fuel break project with West Arm Park over on the west side of Proctor in this general area. Um, there's been little fuel treatments here and here, and there's one coming up here. Uh, we're looking to try to put something in here, here, and these are ridges. Maybe try to get something up there um, to, 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 to not have the fire shed sort of concept. Uh, we don't have all of these yet, but that's where we'd like to be before the next fire. Wear your college's hat and say, well, it's natural, let's let it burn, right? Um, but this is a drinking watershed. Uh, these are the headwaters of uh, 100 plus people drink out of this creek. Uh, this is the headwaters. Uh, it's been designated as a zone to produce uh, water in the late summer. Um, uh, it's, it's, and it's not that far from town, it's about eight kilometers from here. So I started to, to work on the fire and I started to send out emails. I just said, you know, I, I know a bunch of stuff about this fire and, and the, the fire service um, media system doesn't really give a lot of detail. And people were asking me, I said, I'm just going to start sending out emails to the community email. Um, don't need to read it. I'm just, I'm just saying this was one of my first ones. Um, to just give a little more detail to augment what was coming out uh, through the sort of official channels. So as I said, we, we did have to try to get machines in there because it wasn't safe to put people on the ground as I understood it. So we, within a day we had equipment working, a uh, feller buncher and a couple of hose, building fire guard. That's what fire guard looked like uh, typically. It's just, a, it's just a path through the forest wide enough for a machine that happens to be a dead pine stand in Upper Hare Creek. Uh, you know, back from the fire. Um, this is just helicopter, that's a heavy helicopter dropping water. Uh, August 2nd, the fire started to move pretty fast. Ramona back here had, had, was also updating the community as the regional um, uh, district representative. Um, fire had already jumped around 1,500 hectares. I saw it as part of my role that I just sort of took on because I noticed the concern in the community um, um, I had to not show that when I was writing these emails, but um, it's pretty serious. So I just give just a little more clarification as sort of the liaison with the crews. Fire's still growing. We have, oops, started to build a fire guard here um, around the nose of the fire. This is the way to hair up here. We're trying, we're trying to reach around the nose of it. This is just typical moment on the staging area, or the, yeah, staging. A couple days later here, the fire, oh, the fire's now over 2,000 hectares. Um, burning large, well, it's a little bit controlled. We, 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 we're trying to just keep it from going towards town. That's, that's the best we can hope for pretty much through the whole fire. Um, this is the north, the north nose of the fire. The fire started in here. If it wants to burn into the park, away from the community, uh, that's what it can do. And there was no chance of, of, of doing anything about that, anyways. So here's our here's our fire guards. Those little those little uh, these, these lines here. The helipads have been set up all the way along the creek, uh, on the ridge. Um, we've even done. This is this is a. A helipad here off of the machine guard. There's even been already some some back burning to clean off some of the fuels here. Uh, this is a uh, so here you have this is this is underburned already, and this is sort of more heavily burned, obviously. And then up on the ridge, it was it was more intense. But we were trying to clean off the, the unburned fuels adjacent to the fire guards. So the black line concept that you were hearing about earlier. Um, this was a tough day. Um, the fire ended up somehow on the other side of the valley at four in the morning and uh, appeared to have spotted over uh, right behind our staging. And this is a few hours later. I get a phone call from my logger who's on one of the machines at five in the morning saying, um, the fire's on the other side of the road now. Uh, what do you want us to be doing? <laughs> and uh, so I phone the incident commander and say, uh, our logger says he sees the fire on the other side of the road. 
Anyway, it was a regrouping day because the fire had gone over, uh, jumped them, it appeared to have gone over a kilometer across the valley uh, somehow, even though the winds were low and that didn't appear. Anyways, these are machine guards racing to try to head off this fire before it hits the deep, dark forest and heads for the ridge. Um, was not successful. Uh, came close but couldn't do it. So here it is burning through one of our uh, cut blocks. Uh, I was like that slide there just to remind us that yeah, some hose might get burned up. Uh, luckily, it was just hose. Uh, this is around, I don't know, it's about a week into the fire, I think. So this is what the fire did here, just to orient you. Um, this is where we were working on containing the fire. We are making good progression. We had to cut off potentially here, where this had been burned off. Cut off here, this had been burned off, but then it started here, was heading for the ridge, and there's no fire break anywhere going between the air uh, kilometers away. So this is... Uh, the crew one of those mornings, the crew quickly expanded. Okay, this is also happening, this is that 1st of August, 2nd, 3rd, 5th of August. Uh, Chilcotin is going, Williams Lake has been evacuated already. The resources are more heavily allocated up there. There are very, very limited resources available. Um, one of the things I learned, I'll get to it, I'll hit it again at the end, but if you don't get the access and the like part of those fire guards and part of that access to them was to put a, have a place to put those fire crews safely. And if there are, isn't space to put them safely and, and where they feel they can actually do something, there's no point just putting people on a fire and dropping some water or whatever. If you're not going to have serious, they don't have a line, say here's the line, we can defend it, go, we're not going to put anyone on a fire. Certainly if there's no one available, right? So, so here's who we had available on that day. Anyway, the, this is a briefing in the morning. Uh, going to work. Walk in the wrong direction because that's not the direction the fire is supposed to be in. Um, fire is burning back down to our beautiful helipad. Uh, this is burning. This is luckily a backing fire at this point. Down to is burning down the hill towards the the, the <coughs> creek bottom, uh, but it also was burning up. Um, I was just taking photos while I was while I had a minute. So these are all my photos just while I was listening to the briefing and whatnot. People are getting tired. Uh, those guys uh, fall in danger trees. Crazy what they got to do to make it safe for everyone else. Trees are on fire. And uh, I don't know, 10, 12 hour day, maybe. Uh, the list of my emails was growing, um, usually about one a day. Um, written at you know, 9, 10 o'clock at night when I get home because I'm like, I'm hanging ribbon all day and then, and then 